Monday to everybody. Happy Monday. Yeah, that's right, we back in the building. Oh, as I sit here sipping my coffee, as I sit here sipping my coffee, I noticed a strange occurrence that's happened in the chat this morning. Caught you slipping. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, those are the words of Toronto Riggins said, I'm back in my spot. I was letting you keep it warm for me. <laughs> Woo, buddy. Tell y'all something. When I was younger, I used to watch my my grandmother make coffee. She used to make that uh that Folgers. You know, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. She used to make that Folgers. And she had the, the brew to go in the pot. She also had the little little jar with the instant. And she would drink coffee through just throughout the day. <laughs> just throughout the day. And I used to think that was the nastiest thing ever. Until my great grandma, she made us some coffee up. She put a little, y'all remember, remember uh, pet milk? She put a little splash of pet milk in hers and a couple of teaspoons of sugar. She would stir it up real good, take a sip, and I would watch her say, mmm. And she would sit on the table because my great, my grandmother drank it black. My great grandma, she added cream to it. And I just watched her walk off to the back room. And she go close that little back door, go in that freezer. I pick up that cup of coffee. I take me a sip and was like, "Woo!" I put it back down. And I walk away like that was good. Mm. So uh, we just call her Mama Kate. Mama Kate, can I, um, Mama Kate, uh, can I have some coffee? She said, "Nah, boy. Coffee is stunt your growth." <laughs> I should have listened. <laughs> Oh, I should have listened. Because she wouldn't give me no coffee, but every time she went to the back, every time she went to the back, your, your boy was still in the coffee. I was grabbing that cup and I was taking it to the head, burning my tongue up and all, but I was drinking that coffee. I should have known then that I might have a problem because today, mm, I just had to be short then, Grandma. <laughs> Oh, just for this morning. I'm off today. Uh, okay, okay. She said, when the playing field is level, though. What up, Health Talk? D-Rob. How y'all doing? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, hey, hey, look, the sarcasm is real. That's your yes, sir. Sure, that's what the computer says. <laughs> Oh, man, I love it. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, then, hey, I love it. I really do love it. A lot of people be tripping. Not your boy, though. I ain't never really tripped on it, though. I've never really tripped on it. It's never been a big deal for me. Some people hate it. I got some friends that's taller than me, and they hate being short. I'm like, bro, you taller than me, so why you mad? Why you tripping? And it kind of goes into what we're going to talk about today. You know, we've been talking about confidence. What up, Monique? Hold up. All right, I'm back. We've been talking about confidence and mastery and becoming an expert in your field and things like that. 
And today we're going to kind of move into the next phase, the next phase of that, which is faith. Faith. And I'm not talking about, and it's, I mean, it's only, it's, it's kind of hard not to talk about religion when you talk about faith, but that's not going to be the primary context of the, the, the show. Just basically for this week, we're going we gonna to really dig into it this week and we're going to go into different components of it and what faith actually is, what it actually looks like. What up, Kay? We're going to talk about a lot of that this week. But before we get into it, welcome everybody to Morning Motivation, where we are building community, increasing our thoughts, and getting our day started on the right foot. I am your host, Jamon, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Over the weekend, I had the pleasure of watching the youngest, the youngest uh, kiddo in the stable, my bonus daughter, Bree. Bree is ranked third in the state in, in female wrestling, middle school, that sixth to eighth grade range. So shout out to Bree. I want to say that first thing this morning. Very proud of you, sweetheart, for, for all the hard work that you've done, all the effort that you put out there. And you know, when you talk about children in athletics, children in sports, sometimes you go and you watch it and you endure it. It's not really that entertaining. You're kind of on your phone. You're doing some things. You're engaged, but not really, because it's not really entertaining. But let me tell y'all something. This girl went out there, and she, she actually knows what she's doing. She wrestled better, and did I mention this is her first time wrestling? Her first time wrestling. Now, she does some other things. She's, she plays instruments, so she's been in little concerts, and she's been in the limelight. She's even done some stuff with judo also, but not to the, this degree. And so her first time out, she go out there, and she brings home third. She probably could have brought home second. And if all things went right, she could have brought home first. She had a shot at first, second, or third. She had a shot at it. And she lost. She Well, she won the first match. And she knew she had won, but I think she was trying to make sense of it in her head. And as the ref raised her hand and she walked off and she greeted her dad, you know, you could see the excitement building. But then we were on the other side of the, the mat. So she kind of glances over and she sees her mom and then she starts walking fast. The pace gets a little faster. It gets a little faster. She's turning that corner. By the time she hit it straight away, she's in a full sprint. For those of you who don't know Bree, Bree is not super excited. She's kind of like me in that, in that way. I'm not a super excitable person. But I saw more teeth. <laughs> She was jumping and cheering. It was a it was a good time, man. It was good to see her just let go like that after something that she done. It was a, it was amazing to see. Now let's rewind. Let's rewind. Let's go back maybe a month. Let's go back maybe a month, and let's talk about we had a conversation. So yeah, I know I gotta get my get my little music on. <laughs> Bobby says she definitely doesn't get excited like that. Yeah, first wrestling match conference. Her first wrestling match, she stuck a girl in the first period. Pinned her, hip toss, wow, held her. Just like she like she do this. So we're sitting around one day, and she said, Jamon. I think I want to enter. My dad told me about this tournament. I think I want to enter it. It's the state championships. Now, female wrestling is just catching on in a lot of parts of the country, but it's growing really fast in North Carolina. But for years, you would have girls enter the guys' tournaments. And some would do okay, but most just wouldn't, just because of the it's such an aggressive sport. And you got, depending on the age group now, 
you know, if you if you're elementary school, you have girls that'll that'll spank guys. But as guys hit middle school and high school, the odds of that gets really slim because of testosterone. Guys just get this huge burst of testosterone that gives us much more strength and much more aggressive tendencies. And so it gets tougher. So North Carolina has come up with a a few different leagues for girls to actually get in and wrestle. And so having a state championship, you know, my mind, I have limited thinking because I remember what I knew and things have changed since I was doing it, since my oldest son was doing it. Jordan is still, you know, he's in that space where he sees it way more now, but I didn't. And so we go into, we having this conversation and I was like, okay, well, I said, I said, I think it'll be a good idea. You should do it. She said, uh, yeah, I've been practicing and cause she's part of this wrestling camp, wrestling club. And everybody in her club is, they've been there for years. And so they're really good. And so she's questioning herself. And I remember her saying, you know, I'll go and I'll do my best. And, but she didn't sound confident. I said, hold on. I said, do you know who your dad is? She said, yeah. I said, no, your dad is probably one of the best wrestlers this state has ever seen. He has multiple state championship wins under his belt. He eats, sleeps, he breathes wrestling. This, he coaches it now. This is what he do. Do you know who your mom is? Your mom has traveled the world, being great at everything that she does. That's your DNA. That's where you come from. So you don't think if you go and learn something, especially ski your dad specializes in, he has mastery in, don't you think you got a chance? She was like, well, maybe. And this is really how she talks. Maybe. I don't know. <sighs> I'll do my best. <laughs> and so I'm giving the pep talk, right? And as we get closer, I'm watching the work. I'm watching her face become a little bit more chiseled. I'm watching her her forearms. You can see the a few one or two little veins popping up because she's grabbing and she's pulling and she's working out hard. And I'm watching her transform into shape. Now I've seen it before. I've done it. My sons have done it. But I've never seen a, a girl do it. And I'm watching. I'm just like, man. Hmm. If she has, a, if she can pick up. Half of what her dad's going to show, because I'm sure he has a game plan. I'm sure he has her working on certain moves that she's good at and that she'll be able to utilize in this tournament. And she was nervous all morning. We get there, she's bouncing around, and she her energy is higher than normal, but it's nerves. She got real, real really, 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 um, butterflies really happening in her stomach right now. But when that whistle blew... Who she was came out. All the hard work that she put in, it came out. <laughs> and she came out victorious. Now, I ain't going to give y'all a blow by blow with a whole, whole weekend. But let's just say she lost her next match and she was devastated. Because she kind of, she gave it away. She took the girl down, got her two points. She was winning by... She went in by one? I forget exactly how it went. But, oh, yeah, yeah, she was winning by one. And then with th the girl stands up, all she had to do was trip, her, trip the girl back down or just hold on to her because the girl was actually going out of bounds. She could have just rolled her out of bounds and then reset, and the match would have been over because it was like two seconds on the clock. But because she got to the out of bounds, because her habit was in the practice room, probably, I don't know this for sure, but... Some things become habit, the things we do over and over again. When we go out of bounds, if we know out of bounds, we tend to break and we tend to stop. But she let the girl go. The girl walks out of bounds, gets the one point, ties it up, goes in overtime, and the girl first takedown wins. Or first, first points win. And so that's how she lost. And so she was devastated. Devastated. So what did we talk about when she came to the side? Resiliency. It happened. You can't do nothing about it. Let's feel the feelings right now. Now push them to the side. Now go out and make it happen. Because a loss right now, because she got to be up in like another 10, 15 minutes. 
So she got literally five minutes to fill it, process it, and get ready for the next match. How many times in life do we fail to do that? Something happens and we just, we give in. We give in. We, we can't pull it back together in time. And so now it costs us in another space. Or the next match or the next thing we're doing, we're not prepared for because we were in our feelings. Resiliency is an amazing thing. And resiliency is something that we're going to talk about, maybe not this week, but maybe in a week or two. But this week, we're talking about faith. Now, as much as I would love to take credit, I can't. Because she did all the hard work. Her dad did all the hard work. And mentioned we moved in the middle of this process. So now we're having, her mom's having to drive her further. Her dad's having to come get her from other places further. It's taking more time. She's having to be disciplined with what she eats because she has to make a certain weight. She has to be disciplined enough to stop the bad habits. Now, do you think she would have done all that if she didn't have faith that it was worth it? <laughs> uh, Monique says, I wish I could put the jumping emoji. <laughs> I mean, it was a it was a good it was a good example of or a reminder, a great reminder that what it really looks like when you're in process. Because the older you get, some things, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo, that tigger bounce. Oh, you said tiger, but I call it tigger. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. When you get older, you see things differently because it's kind of old hat. You've experienced this thing. You've experienced that thing. So now it's not as new to you. But the one thing I love about coaching is helping somebody with their first that first jolt of confidence, that first win, that first new mindset. Because you're not, some coaches, their job is to teach you how. Oh, yeah, that's how you spell Tigger. See? See, y'all smart, man. <laughs> Tigger has two Gs in it. Y'all smart. I like it. When you first do a thing, it's, it's really like a, it's an unknown. You think you might, you think you can do it. You've seen other people do it. It don't seem super confident, competent, confident. It doesn't seem super complicated, but you know there's work that's involved in doing it. And so the question is, can I find the intestinal fortitude to make that happen? Do I have what it takes to make that happen? And so there is no faith because you've never done the thing just yet. You've never done it. You've seen other people do it. You've seen some win. You've seen some lose. But you don't know what it looks like for you. But then you start putting the pieces in place. You start doing the work around it. For her, it was drills. It was training. It was learning moves. It was resting the body. It was eating right. You see, in competition, sports, it's it's an easier path to understanding because there's so many examples of people that win in sports and they dropping clues all around. Hey, you got to eat right. Hey, you got to work hard. You got to do work after the workouts. You get all this advice. Hey, you need to get a coach that has a winning track record. You got to understand the science behind it. Understand the theory behind it. What's your why? Why are you here? You use that to fuel you. You hear all these things when you're coaching. And you're teaching somebody how to do it. The hardest coaching job is when you get to the space where they know how to do it. And then you got to get them to believe in themselves. That is the hardest part of coaching. Getting the person that you're coaching to believe in their self believe that all the work they've put in matters and that's the side that most people don't realize most people don't realize that 
a loss is probably one of the best things that you can experience. Does it suck? Yeah. Is it embarrassing sometimes? Yes. But in that loss, and it's the same thing that we talked about Saturday when she had her first loss, there's this thing called resiliency. The ability to bounce back. Sometimes when we start out winning, sometimes when the path is easy, when you're the big strong guy in school, let's just say middle school, you 5'9 in middle school, you probably one of the biggest kids there. Let's say you're the prettiest girl in the school. People will open doors for you f- quicker and faster. You People will be on their impress you tip. So the path is easier for you. For the guy, nobody's going to put a lot of interference in your way because you're a big guy. But you haven't done anything to earn that. So your faith is not... It doesn't come from a place of knowing. It comes of a place of validation. And now this big, strong guy goes out for the football team or goes out for the basketball team, but has no athletic ability. He has has two left feet. And now instead of being celebrated, he's being clowned. It's not that he doesn't have the potential. He just never had to do it. So he has no faith in his ability. And so now, being picked at, if he has a good coach around him, they'll say, all right, well, first we're going to work, work on footwork. Then we're going to work on dribbling. Then we're going to work on um, passes. Then we're going to work on shots. A coach will say, well, I'm going to teach you how to do it. Now, it's in there. We just got to get it trained. And so now, over time, he'll get better. He'll now have more pickup games with the guys in the community. And then he'll try for the team probably in high school because now his faith in itself is building. It's building. And that's the journey of life. That's all of our journeys. I will definitely tell him on it. She actually might be listening right now. No, she ain't left home yet. So I would de- her mama tell her, I tell her. <laughs> We've definitely, definitely passed that message on. But I just want to, you know, I just wanted to go out this morning and let y'all know, man, the the journey is real. The process is the process. And no matter what stage you are in, you got to go through what you got to go through to get where you're trying to get to. So I want to ask a personal question. Put a one in the chat if you stopped chasing your dream if you put it on pause for a few minutes i don't really want to know the reason why i'm just curious if you have stopped chasing a dream for whatever reason just put a one in the chat if you stop chasing a dream if you just put something on the back burner because he just it just it took too much energy it took too much time it was frustrating you but you really wanted it still want it but you just kind of put it to the side for a few minutes all right, I got, okay, triple ones. Triple ones. And from time to time, I think we all do it. Sometimes it's life. Sometimes it's it's family. Sometimes it's frustration. <laughs> and sometimes it's just, you're just tired. You're tired. You want to fight, but you ain't. I I don't have nothing left in me right now. Oh, I don't have nothing's left in the tank. I I'm just gonna chill over here and I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna mind my business. And then the the craziest thing happens. Time keeps rolling, and then it gets easier to not pick it up and keep doing it. It gets easier to just sit back on what used to be. It's easier to look back at the wall and see the awards. It's easier to say, man, I, I, I was pretty good at that. I was pretty good at that. And then somebody says, man, why you should you should do that again. 
you should get back on the horse and you should go you should go try it again. And we just like, ah, I would, but time, time is still rolling on. So this is why I asked the question, what do you really want? What do you really want? And this is the question that should haunt you the rest of your life. What do I really want? Because in this life, this particular age and time that we live in, we can have almost anything that we want. Maybe not all at the same time, mind you, but we can have most anything that we want. This is probably the best generation to be alive in, to be living through. Because the gatekeepers are falling by the wayside left and right. There is not a lot of barriers to get into places or spaces like they once were. There is no Jim Crow. There is no brown paper bag test anymore in for us in our community. You can go however you are. So why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? Why do we put our lives on pause or put these things on pause? Because sometimes the fear of disappointment, the fear of failure, the fear of being ridiculed, and the fear of being picked on is stronger than the effort is going to take to do it. I think it was Les Brown. He said, fear of unknown hells is stronger than the fear of a known heaven. Not the fear of a known heaven, the, the desire for a known heaven. The fear of unknown hells is stronger than the faith of a, of a known heaven. I just want that to sink in for a second. Many of us are in the prime of our life. And I don't mean, I mean your prime. You at the middle part of your life. You at the point of your life where you have some knowledge. You have some resources. You have wisdom. And you understand what faith is. So I would say now is the time to start making some of those things happen. Killer Mike got arrested last night. <laughs> he won three Grammys. Three Grammys. <laughs> but then turn around and get arrested. Misdemeanor. Now, it just happened last night, so there's not a lot out about the story. But he won three Grammys. Best rap album. Best, um, well, for science and engineering. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if it's a category. I'm not sure if it was a, he scored a movie or whatever. I'm not sure exactly what it was. But he won three Grammys. And his, I know, right? You think this some old, burp, again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ninjas be ninjin. But I'm like, kill not Killer Mike. Killer Mike has... He is not the, the same artist that he used to be. He's, he's an activist now. He's mature. He's a father. He's a business owner. What did he do that could have got him arrested? And all I could find out this morning was that he apparently, he was in path. I think maybe he knocked over a security guard. I think it was something simple. He, he bumped into somebody and they fell or something. But they considered it as assault. Now, I don't know if that was energy with the knockover. I don't know if somebody purposely stood in his way. I don't know what happened, but that's all I can get out of it this morning. But on the night you win three Grammys as a solo artist, your highest achievement in your profession, you get arrested. What y'all think is worse? Will Smith slapping Chris Rock on the night he won his first Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> or Killer Mike going to getting arrested, leaving the Grammy party in handcuffs 
after winning three Grammys as a solo artist. Which one is worse to y'all? Let me know. Put put Will if you think Will was worse, or put Mike if you think Mike was worse. Let me know what y'all think about it. I'm just curious. Which one? Because they're both, you are at the height of your professional achievement. You are being recognized by your peers. Will was worse. That was definitely worse. So you mean Killer Mike was definitely worse, uh, B? <laughs> I say both. <laughs> both. I mean, because they both been in the game a long time. They both grew up. The slap heard around the world. Uh, okay, so Will Smith was definitely worse. Okay. I hear you. I didn't even know Killer Mike was still making music. But I will say one thing that I did read was when he gave his acceptance speech, he basically said, thank God. Thank God. Because you're never too old. You know, when you get a certain age, especially in our community, in the hip hop community, in the in the in the in the the, the sauce community, whether you're modeling, acting, rapping, shooting ball, when you get to a certain age, people say you're washed up. People say you're old. Randy, what's up, what up, Randy? Will, it was live. We saw that crap. Can't unsee it. <laughs> yeah, man. Killer Mike said, you're never too old. Which tells me he still had faith in his ability to, to create, to do the thing that he started doing. He still had faith in it. Just season. Not old. I like that. That Jiggy said, just season. So the album was hard. I didn't even know he had an album out. So now I gotta go check it out. I guess I guess all publicity is still good publicity, right? Because now I didn't even know. Now I gotta go see. <laughs> and I don't do it. I don't think it was no publicity stunt. I just think, I don't know, man. It's wow. You know, the conspiracy theorist to me would say, um, just hearing that he 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 bumped into somebody, I'm like, man, this had to be a a, a little old frail lady, because <laughs> I just can't imagine it, yo. Hey, man, look, <laughs> he said, thank God. Then when they laid hands on somebody, hey, man, he he's he's doing the work of the Lord. <laughs> Oh, so Jagged Edge featured on that too. So was that was that the name of the, of the project, Science and Engineering, or something like that? Let me look up Killer Mike album. Let me do that real quick, just so I know for myself. All right, let's see. Man, Killer Mike got a lot of albums. Scientists and engineer. Okay. Three Grammys. Yeah, Killer Mike did his thing, man. But that's what I was saying. When you get to a certain age, you understand some things. You've seen it before. You know how it works. So it's not a matter of faith anymore. Oh, it's called Michael. Got you. I looked at that one, but I was like, what is wait? Can't be the right one, but it, I guess that's him when he was a, what, seventh grader, sixth grader? <laughs> With that butterfly collar? Oh, man, I had one of them shirts and them sweaters and collars. I think that was the time. I think that was the time. But, yeah, so when you get to a certain age, it now becomes want to. It becomes want to. It's no longer about faith. It's no longer about the know-how. It's the want to. And so we got we to gotta really do some soul searching on do we really want these things that we say we want? Are we content to let it go? 
how do we get the motivation to do it again if we do want it? Because there's tragedies that happen, man. We get in our feelings about things and, oh, man, the energy to try is harder than the energy to do it. Who can relate? The energy to try is harder than the energy to actually do it. We all get to that space where we were good at something and then life gets in the way and now it's a struggle to even attempt to even think about it anymore. So what we do, we bury it. We bury it. We stop working for it. We stop planning for it. But I'm going to tell you from personal experience, it's never, ever too late. It's never, ever too late. As long as you are still on this earth, as long as you still have freedom of body and mind, you can still do. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go be starting running back for the for the Carolina Panthers next week at 60. You, better, you don't want that dream. You think you might want that dream, but you don't want that dream. <laughs> you don't want that smoke. Man, I'll tell you, I was, I, my, my son, my son does a lot of um, sports training. And he was training some guys one day, and I went out there with him. He said, hey, Pop, could you hold the, uh, hold this, this dummy, this, the, the big dummy, and the guy hits it as he come, as he come around the corner. And I'm holding this dummy, and the first time this guy hit, he hit it, he just get, just hit it with the forearm. And it was just like, mm. and it hit me, and it, it, it made everything in my body shake. <laughs> You made it. Now look, I'm a solid dude. I don't move too easy. <laughs> but when this guy hit me, and he was what? He was 16 years old. He's about six four, six five, maybe two ten at 16. But we came around this corner. He hit this bag. I realized right then, nah, I don't got too old for this. <laughs> I don't got too old for this one. No, sir. Mm-mm. I'm, I like to. I like to remember who I used to be out there on the gridiron, man. I'm not that guy no more. Give me the microphone now. <laughs> I don't even want that smoke anymore. Wrestling is different, though. Wrestling is a little different. I still feel like I'm, I still feel froggy when it comes to wrestling, because wrestling is not just strength; it's, it's also mental. And I understand things about wrestling at my older age now that I didn't understand at my younger age. And I'm not, I'm, I'm probably about as strong as I will. I'm, I haven't lost any strength. So as old as I am, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still benching what I benched back then. I haven't lost any strength and I've gotten only wiser. If Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl, they may still have a chance to try it. Wait, wait a minute. What did I miss? Hold on. <laughs> If Chiefs, if Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl, y'all remember when the Chiefs used to suck? I mean, the Chiefs sucked for a long time. I mean, they had some bright spots. Y'all remember uh, Christian Okoye, the Nigerian nightmare. He was this big running back, and he was like the bright spot. During the same time, um, Barry Sanders was in Detroit. He was like the the, the, the bright spot. <laughs> oh, you went back, Lisa Webber. I'm too old for this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I want to put on no pads, man. I, I don't know. I might got a, about a good two or three strong plays left in me. I might can get you, a, I might get you, a, you know, a series or two. But yeah, I already know. Yeah, that, that time is, that's done. Too many quick twitch muscles. My... My my cartilage and my my tendons they don't they don't they don't ran their course. They, I need to keep them healthy. I don't need to be out there risking injury no more. Not for something like that. <laughs> yeah, but the Chiefs sucked for a long time, and then they brought in Andy Reid, and Andy Reid said, "You know what? I want to build a team from the ground up. I get a chance to start over." Andy Reid is seventy plus years old right now. It's no longer did he need to be there to win. Did he need to go there to take their job? Because he's proven he's a good coach. But he never won a Super Bowl. He come close. 
but never actually won it. So now, at 68 years old, roughly, he's going to go to Kansas City, a t- franchise historically that has never won anything. He's going to go there. He's going to redo the culture, build it in his image. And his first draft pick was a Patrick Mahomes. And then he picked some more pieces around it, brought in some veterans. And since Patrick Mahomes has been the starter, he's been to the AFC Championship game six times in a row. Well, yeah, to that game six times in a row. He's never not made the playoffs since he's been in the league. He's won two Super Bowls, going for his third next week. Coach Reed could retire tomorrow, and he'll go down as one of the greatest coaches ever. But there's some in him that's still driving him, and he wants to be the best. Maybe, I don't know, but why keep going? There's something in him that's worth the fight. And so that's what we got to find in, in, our, in ourselves, in our stories. Are we, do we go through down seasons? Do we go through down periods where life isn't given anymore? You know, when we're younger, life gives. Life gives us everything. It gives us our health, our strength, our family, our resources. Then at a certain point, life starts to take things away. And then trying to recapture a few things, man, the thought of it is hard. Because you tied so much of your personal ego and pride to it, more than what was needed. Which is why you have 60-year-old women out here trying to get BBLs and and, and, and facelifts because they're trying to recapture something that they had. Yeah, it's his faith not to give up, but I think it's more along the lines of his faith is that I'm still the I'm one of the best to ever do this. I you could give me a team and I'll rebuild it. Belichick is considered one of the goats, but the only knock is that he only had he had he did it with Tom Brady. He didn't win before Tom Brady, and he hasn't won after Tom Brady. So. Bill Belcher has an asterisk beside his name. But Andy Reid? Andy Reid has gone to a Super Bowl with, what's, what's, what's the dude's name? Dot, not Dante Culpepper, that's the, that was the Vikings. Um, that year he had Terrell Owens, and I cannot think of his black QB. I cannot think of his name for nothing. Um, I see his face, but I can't think of his name. But anyway, he went to the Super Bowl with him. He had many successful years before that. He was a winner. He just never won the big one. But then he gets to a team where he gets to create it. He designs a team. He designs. He's still offensive play caller. He creates the plays. He, I mean, he is probably one of the best guys to ever do it. And he's probably better than most in the game right now. By Obviously, by his fourth, fifth trip to the Super Bowl in as many years. You are great at something. You've done something that's easy for you to do. But for some reason, you stopped. Failure, disappointment, heartbreak, upset. Donovan McNabb. Appreciate it, D-Rob. Boy, for the young gun out here be knowing, don't he? D-Rob be knowing. Donovan McNabb. That's right. You know, sometimes, most times, culture matters. Culture matters. And when you can get into a, no, no, it, you're right. It was Donovan McNabb. It was Donovan McNabb. And sometimes you get into a culture that's just a winning environment. Sometimes you are, the, are part of the culture, a part that puts the culture in place. And sometimes you 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 go into the culture. And so this is what I was trying. What I that day I was talking to Bree. I was like, Yo, you were born to do whatever you want to do. You have the skill to do so many things. You're gifted. It's in your DNA. You just got to believe that you can and go out there and work like you deserve it or work like you want it. And she did. And she came out victorious. 
she came out victorious. And so that's the hope that I think we all should have. So do me a favor. Whatever it is, whatever that thing is that you put to the side, I need you to take a real hard look at it. I need you to take a deep look at it. I want you to remember what it felt like to do it. I want you to remember the successes you had, the joy you felt while you were doing it. And I want you to just be there. Stay in that moment. Don't think about what caused you to stop. Think about the joy you got from actually doing it. I want you to think about the good times. And once you do that, then I want you to ask yourself a question. Are those times worth reliving? Are those times worth reliving or recreating? Did they bring you that much joy? Football brought me a lot of joy. Sports in general brought me a lot of joy. But is it worth recreating it? Do I have the focus, the energy, the health to redo it, to go back and do it again? And in my scenario, no. I'm, honestly, it was a great time, but I don't really want to go relive those memories. I've been there. I've done that. For me now, it's on to new challenges. My job is to make sure that I don't get stuck. I never want to get stuck in life because I don't want to wake up at the ripe old age of 80 and have a bunch of regrets. Man, I wish I would have done this more. I wish I would have done that more. When time was on my side, I wish I would have done those things. What I'm doing now is what I plan on doing for the rest of my life. It's creating, it's coaching, it's speaking. This is my new sport. Have you found yours? I'm asking, have you found what your next level looks like? Or are you still hanging on to what used to be? Are you still hanging on to the old? And you're stuck. D. Rob said, I can see it for sure. That's good. Because seeing it is a major part of it. And some but sometimes we get stuck. And the more people get stuck than not. Because there's this gray area in our life where we've climbed to the top of one mountain and we've had success. And there's other mountains all around us. And we're not sure which way to go. Put a one in the chat if you're unsure about your next level. Put a two in the chat if you know exactly what your next level is your next direction. One, if you're unsure. Two, if you are sure, if you know. One, if you're unsure. Two, if you are, you know. D-Rob said, I just have to apply myself more. Yeah. And from the the inception of this of this of this show, man, that's that's really what all we've been talking about. We've been working toward it, working toward it. Sometimes we we forget who we are. We forget why we came. We forget why we were doing what we were doing. Okay, I got some twos coming in. Good, I got some twos. Good, good, good. And sometimes we just need a reminder. 
We need a reset. We need to go back and we need to we need to dust the cobwebs off. And personal development is like taking a bath. You need it every day because you need those reminders. You need those constant reminders of the direction you're going, why you're going that way, your skills, your talents, your resources. You need those reminders every day so you can stay on the right path. That's what Yo says. 1.75 means I see the direction, but I'm still a little unsure about this. Okay. Monique says, getting some assistance for the public speaking thing. <laughs> oh, I could definitely definitely help you with that. There's this organization that I know a little bit about called Toastmasters. They're everywhere. Um, go online to toastmasters.org or org and you can put your zip code in there and they'll show you all the clubs that are closest to your house in your area and then you can look look at their time what day and what time of the week they have club meetings on and reach out to the club they'll they'll respond back and go out for a visit and then you'll kind of see how it works and You'll meet other kindred spirits there, people who kind of feel the same way. And then there'll be some some pros or some vets out there. But it's a good start. But that's it. That's just it. D-Rob says, it gets hard, to be honest. Distractions everywhere. I don't even want to date right now because I'm focused on keeping God in my life more. Getting through school and fixing my finances. Yeah, man, it's, not, it's priorities. This is why knowing what you want. <laughs> oh, trust me. I get it, bro. As I get closer to 30, I feel like I'm running out of time. <laughs> well, as somebody who's damn near 50, I'm going to tell you, uh, we all felt like that around 30. Well, I'm say, I take that back. Everybody don't feel that way. Those people who have this unction on them, this call on them, like there's, a time limit on something. You feel this pressure to get certain things done. Everybody doesn't feel that way. But most people start to fully become grown around 30. They start to see life differently. They start to understand their responsibilities more. But there are some of us who have this call on our life, this unction, if you will. And it presses us, it, press, it impresses on us, and it presses upon us. I know I said all three things at the same time, the same way, but anyway. It makes an impact on us, and we feel this sense of urgency. Definitely feel this sense of urgency. And I don't know what you're, what's calling you. I don't know what's, what's, uh, what's on you, but you have a little bit more time than you think, hopefully. We all, we, you know, we never know when, when our time is up, but. Yeah, I agree. You're already on the right track. Monique said, you're already on the right track, D. You're on the right track, man. And so one thing at a time, I'm a, I'm going to, I still got your, your contact info. So I'm, I'm going to hit you up and I'm going to get you, I'm, I'm going to send some um, finance, financial stuff your way. So you can kind of look at and observe and kind of get a feel for it. And we can talk about it a little bit later um, offline, of course, but I, I'll do that for you, man. I'll, I'll get you some stuff sent out to you so you can start seeing some different ways to doing it. That chick yo says something switches around at that age. Yeah, uh, y'all know I'm about to mess it up. Not your medulla oblongata. Your uh, prefrontal cortex. That's what it is. <laughs> hey, man, that prefrontal cortex is fully developed. You know, it says it's about 27, 28 time frame when it finally matures. And so now you start to process things. Your reasoning becomes more intact. And then you have about 10 years of life experience at the same time, and you see where you're headed. Now you start thinking about where you want to go. Because nobody wants to be 28 and broke, because you was 18 and broke. It's been 10 years. I'm still broke. Something got to change. Just keep that heifer spray on you at all times, dude. <laughs> Oh, man. D-Ross, I seen that girl at church. 
yesterday. And I was about to shoot my shot, but she had this glow to her. I was like, nah, I had to get myself together first. Ladies. <laughs> oh, man. Let me tell you this. Now, this is this is not for no, any of the ladies in, in this, this group because I, I know who y'all are in this group. But there are so many women who say men aren't ish. They say all men want is one thing. They said all men are dogs. They say all of this stuff. Yet, they walking around with the girl is popping. They walking around with everything skin tight. Walking around, objectifying themselves. And then when a guy wants you for that, I don't get what, why, why are you upset? And ladies, this is not for y'all in this group. This is just general observation about the world. It used to always bother me. Why do, why do girls get so upset? I mean, she got all the stuff popping and this is out there for everybody to see. And so then she mad when the dude want that. It's just like, yeah, that's what you was advertising. That's like Kellogg's advertising Frosted Flakes and then getting mad when people want to buy them. But D-Rob just hit the nail on the head. The way this chick, she had this glow that made him say, you know what, I got to come correct on this one. I got to come correct on this one. Ladies, you set the tone for how a guy perceives you, how he approaches you. Because, oh, it's how I approach my wife and how I would approach somebody else is totally different. Okay, now that's after dog. Okay, let's let's dial that back. Hold on. <laughs> what? How you present yourself? And this is just ladies and and gentlemen. How you present yourself is how the world will will accept you. The world doesn't judge. The world only judges what you put out there. That's basically what it comes down to. So thank you for sharing that, D. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate you, bro. Look at the love in the chat. D. Rob said, I know a heel woman when I see one. <laughs> and that's the thing, too. As you become more confident, you realize it wasn't the girl's you know what I'm talking about when I say the girls. The girls, you, you're not confident in the girls. You're confident in yourself. And the girls are just, they're attached. They're additions. But they're not the main thing. They're not the main thing. You are the main thing. Who you are as a person is the main thing. And when people can see who you really are, they treat you accordingly. But when you're using, if I'm walking around with my shirt off every day and I'm, I'm baby oiling my abs up every day and I got the biceps bulging every day, well, then, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just that, I'm, that's what I am. That's what people are going to treat me as. That's what they're going to expect. But when I put a suit on, I put a nice shirt on, guess what they can still see? They can still see my arms. They can see that I take care of myself. But they also know that I'm about something. Your image matters. And I think your image is a direct correlation with your personal faith in yourself, your personal faith in your own abilities. Talk to a person longer than longer than two minutes. You find out real quick that this, whether this person is as advertised or they are a mystery. That's something that's, that needs to be solved. I want to know more. <laughs> All right, so we're going today. We've been introduction into it's been introduction into faith and into faith. I didn't set my alarm this weekend. Your boy, I was down for the count yesterday, man. Yesterday, my energy was so low. 
And then we still, I mean, we, we've been running nonstop for almost a month, traveling people. We haven't had a weekend to ourselves. We haven't had no time to even just let our hair down until yesterday. Yesterday was the first day this year. Or the first, yeah, the one the one day this year that we've been by ourselves in our in our new space. Because of the, the two weeks before that, we were traveling. We were it was holidays. We were packing, and we we just we have had no time. And yesterday we were just at the house, and we were my wife was hanging some blinds, and you know we were just we just took it easy. So much so, I didn't set I didn't cut my alarms on this morning, so I woke up like an hour late. So I got on a little late. So, <laughs> and the week has begun already, but such is life because I have faith that I'm going to figure it out. I truly believe that all things work together for my good. I truly believe that. I believe that whatever situation comes, I'm going to find my way through it. I'm going to work my way through it. I truly believe that because I've seen it happen too many times. So I don't even stress over certain things anymore. And that's where I want us to get to. I want us to be able to dust off some of those old dreams. I want us to be able to create new lanes and have success in them. Randy said, D, that's a boss mindset. It's okay to leave a little scratch on. <laughs> it's okay to leave a little scratch on her, though, so she remember you when you come correct. Introduce yourself and ask her a genuine question, then walk away. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, bro, I love y'all, man. Hey, have talk about this, about the log out, bro. I'm about to log out too, man. But look, you have a great day, man, no matter what. No matter what. But yeah, man, so this week is more the same. We got a lot of stuff happening this week. However, through faith, all things are possible. And you got to get to a point where you truly believe those words that no matter what you do, no matter what you go through, it's going to work out. He said, haircut appointment this week too. Hey, bro, ain't nothing like getting that fresh cut, bro. You, you want to you wanna see a man shine? Let him get that fresh cut. You're going to see all his teeth. <laughs> He gonna be smiling. He ain't gonna even have nowhere to go, but he gonna find somewhere to go. Oh, he gonna be out, and instead of going home, he gonna, I'm gonna make one more stop. They need to see my new fade too. <laughs> All right, y'all, man. Y'all be blessed, man. Y'all have a great day. And remember, faith comes from knowing. Faith comes from knowing. And how do you, how do you know? Trial and error. You figure out what works and what don't work for you. You think baby girl is going to believe she can't wrestle no more? Oh, no. She done been tested now. She done seen it. She see all these moves that she was taught. They actually do work. So now she has more faith. In the move, she has more faith in the coach. She has more faith in herself to make it happen. <laughs> D-Rock said, I'm at Target buying water just because. Just because I got that new fade. I got that fresh fade, dog. <laughs> just because I got that fresh fade. <laughs> oh, her first match, she slammed the body to the back, Mo. Her first match, her first win as a wrestler, she slammed the girl. Panda, first period, first two minutes of the match. Was it first period? I don't know. But in my mind, it was the first period. But anyway... <laughs> That's what we got to get back to, man. We got to get back to believing, having confidence, experimenting, trying new things, doing those things that matter to us, that are important to us. Not just doing the things we have to do, but also doing things we want to do. Building. <laughs> Building up that capacity of our faith and our confidence. 
and then nothing will be impossible for us. We can achieve anything. You can have whatever you like. But yeah, man. Uh, Y'all have a great day. Y'all be blessed. And we will definitely see you tomorrow. All right. Peace.